Cardo is a top-down puzzle adventure game with a relaxing theme and a great art style. It also uses a unique map building mechanic that allows you to change the world. In the visuals and sound section I will be showcasing the various areas throughout the game. Finally in the gameplay section I will be spoiling only one puzzle. Let's get started. Kato and her grandmother were on an airship when Kato, unbeknownst to her grandmother, decided to mess with the magical map lying on the table. This map allows one to manipulate the world, making it easier to travel. Unfortunately, she messed up and caused a storm to collide with the airship. Kato was thrown out with her grandmother watching helplessly. She landed on a group of islands and soon picked up the map that would allow her to manipulate the world. She sets off trying to find a way to get back to her grandmother. The best way to describe the story is a cozy adventure. It follows Caro through the world as she stumbles upon various different cultures and peoples. Each culture is neatly portrayed in the game's unique visual style. You'll be interacting with the people and their various little cultural differences, making each area unique. They each have things to worry about and things they do, with which you'll either be helping them or partaking in it. At one point you'll also stumble upon a little bookshop that has an interesting premise. Throughout the entire game you'll be receiving letters from your grandmother as she tries to find you or tell you where to find her. While the entire plot is just you trying to get back to your grandmother, it does make for an empty slate. It allows the people and their cultures to come to the forefront while the story is more in the background. It's more about the adventure through this wonderful land. It's a simple story, but it has charm and feels innocent. The game makes use of a great visual style in all of its aspects. It looks like it's been painted and in some cases they remind me of cutouts. It's an interesting style, one that I enjoyed. You'll be crossing various biomes, each with a unique look to them. Grassy plains with oceans and birds, thick forests with mists and pathways, deserts with dunes and storms, mountains with lava and hot springs, tundras with frozen rivers and ice sheets, dark caverns and a strange little bookshop. While I do wish more was done with the caves and perhaps more with buildings, what's here has been done well. Also I think the lava flows later in the game looked a bit dull. Its characters are also charming with the chosen art style, with each character looking distinct from one another, though they lack varied animations. Speaking of animation, the birds in the grassy plains only have a few frames of animation. It makes them almost look like they're cutouts that's been animated via stop motion. It looks great. The story art in between the chapters are great as well. The map screen is clear and functional. Sound design is great as well. From the oceans and waves to sandstorms to even the interface sounds, especially when interacting with the map, are all good. The music does the job well of supporting the game's atmosphere and feel. The gameplay is where Kato shines as well. It makes use of a unique map mechanic. The world is made up of squares. Each square will contain certain types of terrain, with each of its four sides having a terrain type. When interacting with the map, you'll be able to pick up any tile, rotate it and place it down anywhere else. If you decide to place it next to another tile, you need to make sure it's done legally by ensuring that the sides match terrain types. This is a great mechanic. I absolutely love it. From the first moment I moved and rotated the first piece, I was hooked. I love it, I said to myself when I was done interacting with the first map piece and I'd moved to the newly placed piece. Seeing the world changed after having moved around the piece was great. By using the map you can build the world in whatever way you want. This is done to solve puzzles or to access new locations. New locations are most of the time discovered by picking up pieces of maps scattered around the world. Once you pick them up you can place these new tiles on the world. If you've connected them correctly you can access those land tiles. You don't even have to move across all the land tiles to reach the newly placed tile. You can just pick up the tile you're standing on and move it over to the new tile. The puzzles are good overall. An example, and the only one I'll spoil, is when you need to find a certain girl. They tell you she's usually next to a big lake. You have two tiles, each with one side being a lake while the rest are forests. 
In order to create this lake, you need to position the tiles next to each other, ensuring that the lake side of each tile touches. This creates the lake and the character will now appear. The game makes use of these types of puzzles and others as well. Unfortunately, there are a few complaints I have with the game. The first is with regards to the puzzles, the one near the end of the game. I won't spoil it, but it's the one concerning a monument. I had no idea what I needed to do. I stumbled accidentally on a solution and still did not know how the solution worked. You needed to do it three times, but differently. I looked for a solution online for the other two and still wasn't sure how it worked. It's probably just a fluke since all the previous puzzles were fairly easy in comparison. The other complaint I have is with regards to using the map. While I do like the map mechanic, picking up pieces, placing them down, rotating them and moving the map with only the keyboard is irritating. It would have been so much better and more user friendly with a mouse. Also, as mentioned previously, you need to place map pieces legally. The size of each tile need to match the terrain type. If you want to place a tile with terrain types not matching, the game won't let you. I think it would have been better if the game let you place the tiles, showing a red X on the sides that don't match but just not let you exit out of the map. That way you can place the tiles you want and sort it out afterwards. The final complaint will be the dialogue. When the characters talk, they make use of a speech bubble where the words appear gradually. The only way to speed it up is by pressing the space bar while they are talking. You have to do this every time with each speech bubble. And then you have to press space bar again to move on to the next dialogue. Would have been nice to have the dialogue appear faster or at least the text. I really love Caro. The game has great visuals and a cute story. The way you can alter the world by using the map allowing you to move quickly around or solve puzzles are fantastic and as the highlight of the game. The game is also fantastically adorable. Thanks for watching.